So hello and welcome to video 10 of this series. Oh, we've reached number 10. Uh, I hope this will be a short one. Um, so um, just a few small things to correct, uh, a small addition and uh, a little bit um, more to the multi-threading. So uh, things that, that uh, are not quite nice as I would like it. So the first thing is, um, um, we have here the cabal file, so uh, I add the RTS ops that we have, uh, the, that we can specify them manually, and also enable the event log just for a quick test then. Um, that's first, then let's go to main. Um, so we could manually specify this minus n switch, and this minus n switch then would say use all available cores, but we can also do this programmatically, so we will do it like this. Uh, uh, there is in, in uh, we have to import first, of course. Import ghc cons and um, get num processors. So this is the number of cores the machine has, and then we just say set num capabilities mp, and then we set Basically, this is the minus n switch, but programmatically set. So uh, let's see. Does this compile? It compiles. Very good. So um, okay. So this is basically manually setting the minus n switch. Uh, this is um, yeah our run chains function. Um, Let's go to that. So there are a few changes I want to do there in the chains themselves. So first thing, this was our initial connect client function. And the thing is we catch here some exception, which is basically all exceptions. And that's probably not good. So we should, should um, just catch IO exceptions. This compiles, that's good. So okay, this is a change that I wanted to do for a long time and always forgot. Um, and then we have here this uh, async and we don't do anything with the thread ID. And um, yeah, so the thing is, um, uh, we can also, uh, so this this uh, launches this four concurrently also in the thread. Uh, and actually as we, and this will then executes the main loop of the, um, of the program basically uh, for now, later then, uh, when we add a graphical use interface, graphical use interfaces like to execute their own main loop, and this should be in the main thread. So then we will have to put this in also into another thread. But uh, this is an async and we don't do anything with it. So uh, I want to use the race function from from um, from async library and raise these two functions together. This compiles. So that's good. And what the race function basically does, uh, I explained it briefly last time. So it runs these two functions in parallel threads and waits until um, the one comes first back, uh, one comes back first and then it terminates the other one. So, um, and in case um, an exception is thrown, uh, it terminates both. And I think it re-throws the exception. Which is basically good. So then, then the old chains will be terminated at once, yeah. And we then have to restart them basically. So um, that's also why it's important that we don't catch uh, where was it? The sum exception. There was the sum exception here, and this would also most probably catch also the the, the cancel exception or the, the the cancel signal that is thrown to the thread. So this. Um, should not happen actually. So, um, and this cancel exception is is no I/O exception, as far as I know. Hopefully, I have I will look it up. Um, okay, so that's that's one of the smaller changes, right? And something else. Oh yeah, and then we want to show that. Um, uh, that there are now multiple threads running. So let's see if we can do that. Um, I will also just co uh, uh, copy this function and make it 
so we call it now in the in the chain pretty sure see let's change it to this function and i also want to pass it the vcid the virtual channel id which is currently an int in this case uh, int. and i just want to display that so display to uh, vc uh, display vcid and then new line and then the show instance couldn't reduce instance okay why yeah that's that's why um uh, yeah Good. So uh, this means that actually in in each of these chains. So as I remember, let's go back to here. So this is where each uh, each of these chains runs in its own thread, and we pass it now the virtual channel ID. So we then we can see on the output the virtual channel ID and know which thread uh, from from which thread the output comes. Uh, that's that's the goal here for this, and. Uh, we also have to change something here no probably not let's change that and also i created an additional file uh, this tm dump with multiple virtual channels it has virtual channel 0 1 and 7 and uh, so so let's just try this so the thing is the file is is um, it's 18 megabytes large but still, um, it goes quite quickly through. Uh, okay, this was the other one. So let's just run. Let's have a look at the at the uh, CPUs here to, to see if, if multiple threads are used. And it's too quick that we can see anything. Yeah. So uh, it, it looked like it, but we can't say it for sure. But if we look here, we see this is virtual channel seven. This is virtual channel zero. This is an output from virtual channel one. So we see all of them. Uh, so it, it, as each thread gets a different virtual channel ID, this is a good indication that this uh, is has been run in, in, in different threads. But the output, the logging itself, has some kind of serialization so that uh, otherwise the output would be garbled and mixed into each other. So this um, this is not done in standard logging. So this, the standard logging does to serialize the messages. So. Um, yeah, so that we get a better indication. Uh, that's why I actually I added the um, these switches here. So we have RTS opt and, and event log. And um, now we can start, I can also start a, a larger file. So um, this is some kind of bash trick. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but this concatenates together this file multiple times. And then we have not 18 megabyte, but don't know. It runs for long. So um, let's run this now um, and pass it some, some runtime options with the plus, plus RTS. Minus LS creates the event log. We have this switch minus event log um, building. And the minus n switch, uh, we actually don't need it. So just pass it here for fun. Let's run it now. I uh, could not connect, of course. I need to start the server. And then it runs and runs and runs. So this is now a lot of data. And uh, of course, terminal output is very slow. So uh, I don't expect this to, to be that much performant, to be sure. So I would expect that. Um, the, the this is an IO bound program now and not a CPU bound program. So the, the most time will probably be spent waiting for IO from the network and then until the, the terminal is finished outputting. Uh, let's see. So as you see, um, it runs now for some time. But we should get then with this minus LS switch, we should get a, a good event log. Okay, so now we are finished. We've processed several times the same file, so uh, also the timestamps will not match and whatever. So, uh, but we don't care. We just want to see some things. And if we have now a look, we have here a, a tutorial telemetry event log file. 
and then we can use our venerable thread scope. Uh, you can most distros have it, so you can install it directly from the distro, or you can compile it from 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 uh, from Hackage or even from GitHub. I think it's hosted on GitHub, and you pass it this this file. And um, if you haven't had a look at thread scope, so now it passes the hex. The hack is basically a, a Haskell capability, and so we here see and. This looks quite as expected. So we have one thread for the for the NCT REST processing, and then three threads for uh, for the uh, virtual channels. And we see that four hacks, so four capabilities uh, are used. So I think this looks quite expected. So the a hack is basically uh, Haskell has this M to N has green threads on an M to N thread modeling, so it spawns a native OS thread for each uh, core that it has. In this case, eight, and uh, then you have a lot of uh, Haskell threads which are green threads, and then which are scheduled onto this uh, this this uh, hex. Yeah. And um, so we see here, there's they are not that dense, and the 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 overall CPU is quite low. Yeah, it's in fact it's it's even on, under one hundred percent for for one CPU, which means probably that we have. Um, uh, so these are these these hacks don't do much, just waiting for some garbage collection. And the other ones you have they have quite large uh, weightings. I think this is based because because it's an AO bound now and and the the parsing and processing we do now is not really that CPU intensive intensive, so uh, that that's uh, at, at least I would interpret it like that, and let's see. Ah yeah, and this is this is also what what I would expect is so for example this for me this I would interpret it like this that that our NCT REST thread who who do, who reads from the network and um, passes the 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 messages uh, it stops when it's stopped with the file and then the other three threads have still their queues and and process them and so you see this after run of these three threads until the queues are are finished. And then the, the whole program finish, finishes. Yeah. So um, looks quite expected, as expected, I would say. Um, we, we could go more into the detail and see then where where time is spent and so on. But uh, uh, I don't want to keep. I want to keep this one at least this video for short. The other videos are also quite long. So and um, so basically, that's uh, so we see that it runs multiple threads. That's a good. And um, this file you will also find in the GitHub. And uh, just um, this is a possible architecture. And if you want to see, so for example, in an architecture of, of my other project, Auris, which is a, which the goal is to have then a complete mission control system. So it has both directions. It has several interfaces and can also command and receive telemetry. So both sides. So then it looks like this. Yeah. So this is the diagram from Auris. And let's zoom in a little bit. And um, yeah, so this is uh, so each each of these rainbow colored things is a thread. Uh, then you have the application interface, the network interface. So you know already this. So you had we have this NCTRS and the NCTRS TM, and the NCTRS TM goes to this to so this receive TM NCDU. This goes to the frame encoder and this goes to the switch so this is exactly what we have here and uh, then we have uh, this parallel virtual channel uh, extraction threads chains but you see they do a lot more than we are doing now so um, yeah a, a lot of few conduits and then there is also a, a store which stores this all in the database and uh, uh, yeah, and then also a lot of other threads, and we have also um, not only the NCTRS interface, but the CNC interface and the Eden interface, and also the commanding uh, direction. And um, yeah, so a, lo a lot more is going on here. And here we have um, yeah, the common processor, and here we have the graphical user interface in this 
interfaces via this application interface. We will have something much more simpler for our application, but yes. So if we want to have a look at, um, uh, so this looks complicated and it is basically, you can also have a look into the RS repository and on my GitHub. So this is the complete system uh, as it is now. It's, it's still far from complete. But the basic thing works already. It was already used in a project in my company for internal testing of a software component. So we needed to add um, uh, a system which could send commands and receive telemetry uh, uh, and test a routing component in between. And for this, it was used already and uh, successfully used. Yeah? So this worked all very well. So um, yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, we will have a look then at also later, a look at ours itself, probably, maybe, I don't know, but also a look at Paragon CT and Paragon CT is also written in Haskell. It's a spacecraft simulator, uh, which I use to generate the test data. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will have a look at it later. So uh, let's stop here. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Have a lot of fun.